everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye a really fun yarn base. This is zebra fingering. The zebra line from Wool to Dye For is a two-ply yarn that features in some areas one off-white, one black. In other cases, there's a little bit more blending, so we might have white and more of a heathered gray. But this gives a really fun element to the yarn before you have even dyed it. Before we go talk a little bit more about this zebra yarn base, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Jessica. Jessica, thank you so much for being my lab partner today, and I am really excited to go and dye this fun zebra yarn. And while I have all of you here, Please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed already, and give the video a thumbs up if you're really excited to see how the yarn will turn out. The zebra sections have a reasonable length. Uh, I'm not sure if they are all the same length or not. How this yarn will look knit up depends on a lot of factors, including like your gauge and if you're in the round or flat. Uh, the zebra stripes likely will pool, uh, or depending on the project, maybe you get something that feels a little bit more micro striped. But again, it really depends on what exactly you are making with it. The other lengths that I pulled out look fairly similar. It's hard to look at the yarn and figure out exactly how that might knit up because, I mean, I, it's not really fair to say it's been re-skeined because it has been spun and then skeined. This isn't a dye, it isn't dyed in, so it was never like skeined in the way that it would repeat. Uh, but I think that we're gonna have a lot of fun. I think it's a yarn that could give really fun surprises. And today we are going to dye it with some fluorescent acid dyes. Uh, but Will to Dye For offers this zebra effect on a few different yarn bases. This particular one is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, but they also have it in Superwash Merino, and in some of them, the bare color does vary a bit, so that's something to keep an eye out for. To get started, I am going to add some removable nylon zip ties to 300 grams of this base. I'm not sure exactly what neon colors, neon fluorescent colors we will be using yet. I do have some colors that are already mixed with citric acid, and so I thought it would be fun to apply it to this non-superwash base. The colors will spread more, and we'll get something really, really pretty. I already have a pre-soak bath that has water and vinegar in it. I don't often pre-soak with vinegar, but since I have this one ready to go. I figured I may as well use it. And then we can reuse some of this yarn for the pre-soak. I think the bucket started, you know, maybe like at least half full, a five gallon bucket, and had one cup of vinegar in it. But then I did have some leftover citric acid powder that I put in it at the end. So I'm not entirely sure as to the pH, but sometimes you don't really need to measure. You just can watch and see how colors are striking. And if colors aren't striking, add more acid. So anyway, I'm gonna let the yarn soak in here for at least 30 minutes. I am here in my four inch deep catering steam pan uh, that is dedicated for dyeing yarn, not used for food. Oof. And I think I wanna play with bright, sunset -y type colors. So we're gonna use three different fluorescent acid dyes that have, as I mentioned, already been mixed with citric acid. We're gonna use fluorescent fuchsia, fluorescent safety orange, and fluorescent lemon. I have a lot more of the pink than the other two colors, but we'll see where we end up sort of randomly applying it. The pink might overtake everything. I don't know. Uh, but now I want to add some more liquid onto here, and I'm going to just apply some of that pre-soak. So I'm coming in with about a liter, okay, and I don't want high immersion, but I don't mind and actually want to encourage some color spread here in the pan. So that's a second liter of water. 
which honestly, this might not be a bad place to start. Since this yarn is not super wash, colors are not going to strike that fast. They may with the acid and citric acid strike quite fast, but they also will very, very likely spread a fair amount. And oh goodness, I've been debating adding colors cool versus hot. I think maybe I'll add more of that water and we'll start off cold. I just added one more liter of water. And so the yarn is now less compressed than it was before it sort of would sink a little bit and now if I come in with my gloved fingers or a spoon we'll be able to move the powder and move that color down a bit we could attempt to do fine speckles on this fluorescent colors aren't necessarily the best choice for that since they tend to strike uh, slow anyway, even on a superwash yarn, and color strikes even slower on non-superwash like this. But since we've already got this dramatic feature of the zebra plies in here, I, oh, I think I want the other colorway to be a little bit softer. Uh, so that way that contrast can really shine. Why bother starting cold versus starting hot? If we start cold, this is going to allow us to let some of these colors spread a little more. They could end up being a little more pastel. That is really, really okay with me. Uh, but now that was some fluorescent lemon. And as I come in, you can see that this is allowing me to dissolve it. And it's going to go through more layers than it necessarily would have if it was hot, because certainly if it was hot, I wouldn't be handling it quite like I am now. But as I mentioned, these colors, these fluorescent colors, are prone to spreading out anyway, even without my assistance here. But what is important is I do want my hands to be completely dry before I go into the powder uh, because otherwise then we'll end up with a paste. And a paste is not what we are going for. I don't really know where I'm going with this colorway. One reason why I dye a little bit of the slant, I mean, the fact that the yarn is a little bit crowded in here anyway means that uh, we aren't getting straight lines as we are dying with this. And we will see blending of colors. Um, but the reason I don't want to add like something that is super pooling, even though what I create could pool some, I don't want something that is as pooling on the yarn uh, as it is, as the zebra might already be, just to add some really fun randomness to this project. Okay, now we've got our pink. And as I mentioned, I have a lot of the pink. The nice thing about the powder is that it does give us a little bit of some control in how we are applying these colors. I'm not sure what, huh? Let me do a larger pink section there. And as we go on, we will be layering more and more of these colors within an eventual, well hopefully it won't take so long to strike that I don't flip for a while, but with an eventual flip. But this is also really beautiful if this ends up being more pastel without layering on lots of other color. Let's see. I think I want a little more orange in some areas. So 
So the next time we come in with color, we will have more, uh, the colors will probably strike a little bit faster to what they are doing now, which is definitely okay. And it's okay if there's some white left. All right, I put the lids back on all of those containers. And I think that what we have here is very random and fun, and there's differences between the skeins. I'm not sure how deep each of the colors are going, but uh, what I can see that would be hard with you to see is I see color sitting in the water. It isn't all on the yarn yet. So I'm now gonna turn on the heat. Uh, and we're gonna let, once we things start getting a little steamy, I will reduce the temperature to low. And let's go ahead and wait 15 minutes came over after about half that time to reduce the heat and okay there I was like there's just this one dark spot uh, which like isn't a problem it just felt weird um, so since I'm here we may as well check I don't see I do see a lot of pinks left um, that's why like there's a chance we may not be flipping this uh, for a while um, but we can certainly look and see how some of these colors have gone and we can layer more in those areas to sort of enhance it but anyway I'll wait the rest of the time and then we will come back May as well what's funny here is that the color that has really softened the most is that orange all right, there is still loads, loads of pink in here. Um, and let's check. I'm going to protect my finger a bit because there's some pink spread, but I think a lot of colors are probably going through. Uh, okay, but I do want to add more acid. I just added some white vinegar to this cup, and I'm going to pour it specifically on those ends and well I guess I ran out uh, <laughs> it will migrate uh, at least the acid should uh, but just adding some more and I guess I'm gonna get suited back up to add another layer of color actually though let's wait 10 more minutes and see if the pinks do anything it's been 10 minutes the pinks are starting to absorb. So let's speed things up and add more color. I don't want to flip yet. Uh, first, let's just intensify the colors that we see here and give that some time to absorb. I put my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves back on and added colors onto the yarn, staying approximately in the same areas that they were before, with the exception of the orange, which is looking extremely yellow here. Uh, it's not looking as orange as it did when I had first applied it. This time I applied the colored powders that I wanted all over on the surface and then used the spoon to help spread them out a bit in their areas. Even though I'm going for softness, I don't mind if we end up with some speckles or brightness on this side, but it does make sense to try to build up the color a little bit more slowly, given that I don't want the pink to spread and overtake absolutely everything, which is also why I'm now adding more color to this side instead of flipping first and then dyeing the other side. This is more like it. It'll still be really a lot less bright once it dries, but we're seeing and feeling more of the orange in there, especially when it overlaps more with the pink. So I'm still seeing a fair amount of pink in here. And so, hmm, let's check this side. I mean, that side's not that bad. There's still pink. Uh, so I don't know what makes sense or if moving it will help it absorb. But what we can do is peek down below. And I do see, 
Ooh, I'm debating. I like the bright yellows, and I know that everything will become softer if those pinks spread. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna wait about 20 minutes with the heat on low, give it a little bit more time, and then we're gonna flip it and move on. Whatever spreading happens, happens. If you really wanted to make sure to preserve that yellow and to prevent as much spread as possible with a fluorescent color like fluorescent fuchsia that spreads a lot, what I would do is turn off the heat, let things cool completely so we finish absorbing those pinks because sometimes that's what's required. And then once it's cool, then I would flip and add color to the other side. However, that's just not really what I want to do today. So I hope that that recommendation <laughs> is helpful. And we'll see how much we feel bright yellow or if we feel sort of a less neon color in the end. Let's do this. There's a little bit of pink. Sometimes you see a little bit of pink left and it's really not that much. So let's flip the yarn. It's not that bad, but it is. Ooh, ooh, the coverage over here is good. Ooh -hoo. Okay, so we're definitely gonna have some spread from that pink, but the color coverage is really, really good on the other side. Oh, that's great. This is one of those perks of dyeing yarn that's not super wash. <laughs> it just, everything takes a little bit longer. Oh, that's awesome. There's not very much yellow left. So, I just added some liquid to the powder to apply it to our other side. And we can just sort of stamp it out a little bit. If the water's warm, I will add a little more liquid. All right, next, I originally thought that I would probably time lapse this, but I don't think we need to do that much to this side because I'm pretty happy with it. But my goal is to also finish up this orange and so this will also blend on the other side we saw how much colors went through but since these are all colors that go really well together i'm not worried and then like with the yellow i've got i added some water here so we could add a bit of this orange onto the yarn. I am so happy. Now, there's no way I'm going to use up the pink. But, I can amplify it a little bit in some of these sections. Ton. And the water isn't that warm, which is why I'm comfortable using my fingers. But there we go, our pretty sunset zebra. And there we have it. The colors will probably be a little less bright once it is dry, but I am very happy with where we are here and the zebra nature will still shine but we'll have some non-repeating colors to sort of offset those black plies which i think will be really beautiful i am gonna let this sit for i think 30 minutes on low heat and then we will turn off the heat and let things cool so when you next see me we'll be ready to wash the yarn but we'll also look and see if all the color is cleared or not the yarn is completely cool and i just wanted to look at our dye bath 
maybe there's a tinge of some pink you can kind of see towards the edge otherwise the color appears to be in our yarn so I'm gonna move the camera so we can go watch it fun fact I always have to pop the yarn sort of back in the pan or into a secondary container of some kind because I cannot both move the camera and tripod and bring over the yarn at the same time. <laughs> so that is why that happened. Whoop. Now, we do want to be careful. This is non super wash. I'm adding a little bit of clear dish soap. Uh, we may see some pink bleeding, and if we do, then maybe we'll do uh, more of a soap. But so far, so good. I want to be careful because. The things that can cause felting are abrupt changes in temperature, specifically from hot to cold, too fast. Um, and the reason why hot to cold is more of a problem than cold to hot is that when the fibers are warm, they sort of relax. And then as they shift back to cold, um, then they sort of snap back into place. And that snap back, if it's done too abruptly, can cause something. Uh, but if the yarn is already sort of well-ordered and it goes to, into warm really quickly, the relax doesn't really lead to a disordered mitt. Disorderment, if that makes sense. So that's why I can add just cool pre-soaked yarn to a warm dye bath. But you don't really want to do the reverse and shock the fibers. The other thing is you don't want to squeeze or rub the fibers too much. But I don't see any bleeding. So I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. This zebra yarn is so much fun. I love the contrast of the black next to these very bright sunset colors. Since this yarn is non-superwash, the colors spread out a lot after uh, we applied them. And so we have excellent coverage. There are a few more pastel patches, but the colors spread and blended, and I think that we've got a lot of all of them. Will this colorway pool? I honestly don't know the whole answer. The neon colors are fairly random, and so while there's a chance that they could pool in some areas, the, those colors alone are not something that you could use to do planned pooling. The wild card here is the zebra sections. Are these regular in the way that they repeat or is there a little more variety in the length and the spacing of them? And so that is something that I don't know and I don't know how much variety there is from skein to skein of the zebra base because I haven't knit with it yet. If you have knit with one of these zebra type bases before, uh, please let me know down in the comments how it knit up. Uh, I can visualize what this barber pull section would look like mixed with non barber pull. That I can visualize. But yeah, I guess the, the proportion is something that is harder for me to think about. Jessica, thank you so much again for being my lab partner today. I really hope you're going to enjoy this yarn. I am absolutely thrilled with how it turned out. Non superwash yarn like this can take a little bit longer between flips and steps, but it's really easy to get good coverage because the dyes don't strike as fast. So it's a balancing act and one that I'm super excited about. Jessica, I'd love to see pictures once you've used the yarn. No pressure. Uh, but if you or anyone else who has created something out of Chemnitz dyed yarn, feel free to tag me in your pictures on Instagram. I'd love to see it. On Instagram, I'm just at Chemnitz. There is for sure variation between the three skeins. It's part of the random application process. But I think that they could definitely work together all in one project. And the recommendation I would give is similar to a recommendation I always give. If you don't want noticeable differences when you switch between skeins, then blend them together, alternate them every couple of rounds, 
uh, as you're switching from one to another or throughout more of the whole project if you don't want uh, it to really stand out that you've used multiple skeins. But I also think it's fun to embrace the different nature of hand-dyed yarn and to embrace the fact that there can be some variety as you move from skein to skein. I feel like the zebra stripes could pool um, and there may be a pooling potential there. What I can say for sure is that it's not likely to be self-striping unless you were going to do like an I-cord. If you're going to do something that is three or four stitches around, then yes, you'd probably see some self-striping. But otherwise, you might get spirals or micro-stripes. That is sort of my gut thought that, of what would happen with um, those more zebra sections. But at about, you know, eight to 12 inches long, that's not long enough to give you a full stripe on a sock. I don't really do swatching in my videos, mainly because I dye so many different colorways that I just don't have the capacity to swatch all of them, especially since most of the colorways I dye are in small batches. Some, there's only one of each colorway, and then today there happens to be three, but that isn't always the case. What I can say is I am so intrigued by this yarn that I need to think of a project that I want to use it for and then dye some for myself to do a dyeing to knit type project. So then it won't be a swatch, but I can have something finished that I made out of it to share. Not today, but someday, because I think that this yarn base is so cool. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Engaging with these videos is the best way, the biggest way that you can help support the content, because the more people engage with the videos, then the more people get recommended the videos, and that's a great thing <laughs> for Chemnitz. If you'd like other ways to help support the content, I do have a Patreon and I have an Etsy shop where most of the hand dyed yarn dyed in these videos ends up. So you can knit or crochet with the yarn and rewatch the video to see where it started its journey to become the tool for your creations, which I think is really, really fun. You can find links to all of this down in the video description. The zebra yarn is ready for a black light party. This would be a really fun scarf to have on when you're walking by a black light at a museum. All of the colors are ones that pop a lot. And so, I mean, honestly, under black light, it looks very similar <laughs> to how it looks without it because the all the colors in here are ones that are extremely fluorescent and bright. But I think, especially with those dark plies, it's just super fun. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Uh, what kind of techniques should I try on this base next? Please let me know below. And thank you so much for watching.